Hello, Loveland Magazine readers. This is Cassie here, and I am here with somebody very special today, close to my heart because she does have a journalism background. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell me what you do. My name is Lori Smith, and people here in Loveland might remember me as Lori Straup. And I'm going to make a slight correction. I do not have a journalism background, but I there do There goes have... Cassie, you know, getting excited. <laughs> no, it's fine. I have a, a background in athletic training and okay. exercise science. Um, but I just, I started writing about three years ago and... Took off. Yes, it did. Awesome. Well, the whole reason, guys, I asked her to come here today is... She actually, um, I, I was looking over Facebook, kind of saw a few things, David saw a few things, and we noticed that she has been looked at and picked up by a publishing company. Am yes. I correct by saying that? Just yes. want to use the right verbiage there. Um, I'm really excited for her. I'm Thank so you. interested. Also looked at her website. Um, you have a blog, yes. too. Beautiful, the way it was set up. So she's also from Loveland. So I want to know how all this ties in with Loveland and how you got to where you are now. Um, so just tell me a little bit about your background. You know, how long were you here in Loveland? Do you have parents still here? Just kind of tell me about sure. your, your background story. Okay, so I uh, attended Loveland schools um, from kindergarten all the way through graduated uh, senior year. I was the class of 94. Okay. And we were the first graduating class in the new high school. And I know it's 25 years later, but I still refer to that building as the new high school. That's awesome. Um, and so my parents are still here in okay. Loveland. And um, my mom was a teacher in Loveland for about 27 years, a teacher wow. and a substitute uh, for 27 which, years. Which school building? Oh, you're going to make me name the building. It's fifth grade. Fifth grade. It's oh, fifth okay. Grade. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, we don't have to name the school building, but it was right. fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fifth grade. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And so how, how does your ties to Loveland really connect to what you're doing now. Is there any inspiration behind what you're doing and Loveland? Because everyone that I talk to that have, has moved forward and has been really successful and is from Loveland, they always say, hey, this place inspired me. This is where it was. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, that is an interesting story. So I said my mom is a retired teacher. Yeah. And years ago, she had a student um, named Leslie. And my mom became friends with Leslie's mom. Her name is Shelly. Okay. And Shelly is a multi-published best-selling author. You might know her as Shelly Shepard Gray. And she, up until recently, was a resident of Loveland. Wow. And so um, my mom had retired, and Shelly was, at that time, looking for an assistant. Oh, okay. And she um, described what she was looking for to my mom and said, do you or any of your retired teacher friends have any interest in maybe helping me out a little bit? Right. And my mom said, you have just described my daughter, and she's staying home with her two young girls, but, you know, can I introduce you guys? And so that was fall of 2013. And so right after that, um, we, we lost my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, and our daughters were struggling with their grief, and they loved to read. And we have a very strong faith, and despite that, uh, we, my husband and I couldn't say or do anything. And so I decided, because they love to read, I'm going to write a short story about a girl who loses her grandmother and relies on her faith to get her through that so tough time. Mm -hmm. And Shelly knew I was writing, and she asked to see that piece. And I was very bold and then showed it to her because it was, it was rough. Yeah. And she was honest yeah. um, and told me that, I mean, I guess she recognized some potential and encouraged me to, um, to pursue that. And we ended up, um, she wanted to co-present a okay. workshop at a writer's conference okay. and asked me if I would be interested in doing that with her. And the con that, that specific workshop was not going to be offered at the, at the conference, but she said, you've already made arrangements to go with me and to, to do this presentation. Why don't you go as an aspiring author? And that's kind of when it all took off. Yeah. So that, you know, a, lot of, a lot of encouragement from her. And see, that's amazing to me because there's a lot of people that I know that say, writing's very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. Writing's difficult, even reading, but writing especially. So the fact that you went mm -hmm. and got inspired, wrote a short story, and someone was like, you need to, you need to do something. That's, right. it's right. hard for me. I get writer's block, right. I'm telling <laughs> right. you. Right. So that's incredible. So I do want to know so bad. Tell me about your stories, the ones that you have right now that you're 
um, you know, that you have set in stone, because I know right. up and coming, we don't really have that set in stone yet. Sure. And I kind of want to know the inspiration, maybe behind some of your favorite stories or mm -hmm. some that have been the most popular. You don't have to talk about each one, because I, I looked through, you have a lot. Right. Um, so just, yeah, talk a little bit about that. I think the readers would really love that. Sure. So um, the ones, the I, I recently signed a three book contract, mm -hmm. and they are for Amish stories. Now I will say, <laughs> that's part of that tie with Shelley. Um, Shelley does write Amish fiction in addition to other I genres. I wondered that so much. Yeah. I'm like, I, cause I talked to David, I said, they're Amish stories. I'm right. so curious. Right. So I had that short story that I was talking to you about um, kind of spurred a middle grade book. And okay. so at that writer's conference, I had pitched a sequel to that middle grade book. Okay. And the agent who now is representing me, Julie Gwynn, um, she loved the idea for the story, uh -huh. but she said, I would like to see it not about a seventh grade girl, but what about a, an Amish teen during her rumspringa? And I was like, wow, I don't know if I want to do that. I, I, I didn't set out to write Amish Now, what stories. is a rumspringa? That is the time when um, Amish teens kind of explore outside of their faith okay. a bit. Um, before they decide to get baptized. Okay, okay, just, I didn't know and I sure. want to make sure people know. Sure, okay. that's, sure. that's interesting, very interesting. And so, um, Shelly again encouraged me and said, if an agent wants to see something from you, you might, you know, consider yeah. trying it at least. And so I did and I was, I happened to be on social media and saw a picture of a quilt and immediately got the inspiration for this story. So in this three book series, um, there is the ma the main character in each book it finds herself torn and the decision that she makes will affect not only her life but could significantly impact those around her and during that time each of the characters is gifted a pocket quilt from a loved one and inside um, she receives wisdom and guidance through letters tucked into that quilt. And so that's what the three books are three oh different stories. Oh my goodness. And you that. saw, and you found that just from looking at that quilt. Yes. It, yeah. I'm telling you, inspiration all around, yeah. right? That yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so that's what that series is about that's going to be. Yes. Come, okay, okay. In spring of 2020. Yes, I'm so excited for you. Thank now, you. I did read that there was some short stories that I saw. Was it on your site or your blog? I looked through a ton of, I think it was your website maybe. Some stuff that you some, were working on? Right. I have works in progress. Works but, in progress. Yes. That's neat. Did you Thank come you. up with that idea on your own? Mm. Works in, I've no. never seen an author really put works in progress and let other people into that. Right. Unfinished. That's, right. I liked that. So I saw that. Thank you. I thought that was interesting. Now, did you create? Now, she has a website, guys, if you're wondering. Tell yeah. them about your website because that, that site is really neat. Thank you. Well, I'm, I loved a scrapbook, and so I kind of had this vision of what I wanted the website to look like and I I did it on my own um, through WordPress and a lot of blood sweat and tears yeah. a lot of tears but I, I got it the way I want it to look and um, I enjoy sharing uh, again that was something Shelly Shepard Gray definitely encouraged me to do was to share about my journey um, and so if you do have interest and go on there you'll see a lot of um, just that writing and, and this journey toward publication is a lot of patience and um, just surrounding yourself with a supportive group and um, being bold and, and being you know courageous enough to share your writing because when you're spending so much time on a uh, on a piece on a project it's, it's like a baby oh so yeah it's... oh yeah is there anything now that people can pick up of yours is there anything out there right now there is not. Okay, yes. I just want to make sure. Right. I want to make sure we're okay. Okay. Yeah. But this next one coming up. Okay, that's awesome. Now, on your site, is there anything else that that readers can check out um, besides the works in progress? What else is on there? I want to go a little bit more. So, I have I, I created a tagline that was inspiring service through story, and service serving others is very important to me and, and to my family. And so, um, I have a. a a link, I don't know, a section on my website where there might be different projects that might inspire you and your family and friends to get involved in your own communities. And then also, um, again, I started out writing for middle grade, ages 8 to 12, right. and 
I have a just for kids section, which is where, you know, our daughters are 13 and 12 and they love to read and they love to write. And so they might have had a cool assignment, I thought, from their language arts teachers or things that I just came across. Yeah. And so I, I put those on there too, especially when um, I hear so many parents say, my kids are bored, my kids are bored. So I'm like, well, here, here's a, you know, yeah. why don't you do this project? So yeah. I like, I like that part. And that's where I was getting at because I'm like, you have cooler stuff on that site. I, like, <laughs> I saw you. the kids section. So, um, Thank you. So what I want to talk about now is let's talk a little bit more about um, Loveland. Sure. I want to know what you think about Loveland. Why do you love it? You know, do, would you say that there's a little piece of Loveland, of Loveland and a lot of the stuff you write, you know? You know, maybe you don't even know, but would you say maybe a little bit of inspiration in each story? Sure. Um, the Amish live in different church districts, so right. smaller, tighter knit communities. Right. Uh, rural. This is definitely not as rural as it might yeah. have been when I was growing up. Yeah. There. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think maybe a little bit. I think it's growing up here in in what I consider to be a small town helps me write, um, and my future project is also set in a small town. Okay. So, yeah, I think, I don't know that I would have come out and yes. said that, but yeah. being asked the question, I, I think it does make writing about bit. it a little bit yeah. easier. Yeah, now, yeah. Loveland, do you have any favorite spots? Yes. Do you have any childhood memories you yeah. want to share? Um, I love hearing about that, and especially kind of reminiscing on what Loveland was before. Now it's mm -hmm. getting getting pretty crazy downtown and whatnot. So yeah, share a little bit about that. Sure, I have two things I'll, I'll say. Yeah, sure. Um, growing up playing soccer, uh, I remember practicing at Betty Ray uh, in Phillips Park, and then um, a lot of our practices were at the fireworks fields, which was the Rossi property that I believe now is home of the Brave. Uh -huh. So it's interesting to drive by there and point out to our kids, well, I used to play yeah. you know, soccer here, practice here. Um, but I would say the one spot in Loveland that has a special place in my heart is the bike trail. I remember um, preseason conditioning for high school soccer on that trail. Um, I ran the Flying Pig one year and I did long runs there. Um, my, my dad and I would come down and bring my girls in stroller or on their yeah. little tiny tri you know, training wheel bikes. And um, even now, one of my best friends I met in third grade at Lloyd Mann Elementary she still lives in Loveland, and we regularly meet at the bike trail to catch up and, and take a walk. So just... Um, I would say that's your spot. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's awesome. Um, now, lastly, the biggest thing, and, and I really, I can tell you're kind of modest, and I love that. You're humble. That's, you. that's my favorite. But I do want, you, want people to know about your future plans, and... I, um, if you could give your, your website sure. and where they can find anything about you, where they can get you know information about you and your works and whatnot. Sure. So for future projects, I'm, I'm very excited about the, having the opportunity to publish these Amish stories, but currently my heart is really um, with this contemporary romance series that I was working on prior to signing this contract, and I just feel called to write um, about wounded warriors and to help our veterans. Um, again, trying to inspire service through story, but also trying to inspire, um, well, just to, to try to help readers find, um, hear truth and maybe find light in the darkness. And so, yes, you can find um, information about those projects on my website, which is lauriestraupsmith.com. And I'm also on social media, mainly on Facebook and Instagram, also Lori Straub Smith. So. Now, I think I tried to look you up, and I think you do have to put dash author. Is that correct or no? Because I, I tried to look you up once, and then there was like several. Okay. And then I, it's, okay. I, I think dash author. So, it, guys, just so you know, if that doesn't work, the dash yeah. author does, because I did try it. Um, okay. In case they want to check you out, just I so you know, I was not aware of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a creep on the internet, you know. So, but yeah, so that I'm glad you you shared that with us. And is there anything else you you want to share with the Loveland community? I mean, I I'm just thrilled that you agreed to this interview, sure. and I wish you nothing but the best. And uh, as as David, our editor, does as well in the Loveland community. Um, but yeah, is there anything else that you that you want to share or that we didn't hit on that you'd like to talk about a little bit? I just think I, I thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, 
Loveland was such a great place to grow up and um, great community and awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I love that. I love that. Well, guys, you heard it here first, right? This, is, right. The first, this right. is the first place. So um, we'll make sure we keep you updated on your success because we know it's going to be success. Um, you know, New York Seller's best to help. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so go ahead and check her out on the links that she provided for you guys. And uh, we'll keep you updated. And thank you so much for coming here. We appreciate it. Thanks. See you later, Loveland.